visit our website at www.webex.com. Welcome to WebEx. Enter your attendee ID. Uh, in the background throughout this committee meeting, so just be ready for that. Um, all right, so we're moving, we have two pieces of business here. Um, first one is Bill 2020-196. It's on second reading by Councilmember Pulley. It amends Title IX of the Metro Code of Laws relative to noise. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Great, thanks so much. And Council Member Pulley, you have the floor if you'd like to speak. I don't see your hand up. Yeah, I'm here if you, uh, I, I would, I think, I believe you have a letter, but if not, uh, I would just move approval. Again, uh, all this does is recodifies Title IX uh, with certain provisions which were inadvertently left out of the ordinance when it was filed uh, back in August of 2019. I believe the bill number is 2019-1631. So there were some provisions which were inadvertently left out or deleted from the ordinance, and there were a few minor typographical corrections. And that's really all this bill does is uh, add those provisions which were inadvertently left out and makes those minor typographical uh, corrections. Great, thank you, Councilmember Pulley. We've got a few hands up, I'm gonna go to committee members first. Councilmember Young. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanna double check, I suppose, that this is not creating any new or altering any existing uh, regulations with noise. This is merely housekeeping, is that correct? It is, there is nothing new in this that was not already there. So yes, that is correct. Uh, I believe Mr. Cooper's here and he can speak to that, but uh, that's all we're doing is just putting in things that were inadvertently left out of uh, the recodifying of this ordinance, which was done back in August of 2019. All right, I, I trust you, Council Member Pulley, so uh, thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. All right, I'm gonna go, I don't know if Ms. Cooper had anything else to say, but I'm gonna also, in that meantime, I'm gonna go to council member Druffel. Council member Druffel, you've got your hand up. Sorry, sorry about that. I just took it, didn't take it down after the last time. Go ahead. That's, that's, that's quite all right. <laughs> no, all Thank right. you. Uh, let me go to council member Allen, council member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, want the opportunity to, to speak. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Pulley being a, a good sport and letting me have a, an extra two weeks just to check with some of the neighborhood groups. The, um, the, the bill that was passed last, last August, which somehow got left out when we, when we did this, was um, dealing with educational institutions and noise in the neighborhood. Um, and at that time, we had a good discussion and added some time constraints um, that I think made, uh, made that um, more more appropriate for, for just protecting neighborhoods from um, uh, just typical typical, typical um, educational sports, sports events sometimes, sometimes can be a little bit loud and often are amplified uh, at the high school and, and college level. So I've had some good discussions with a couple of neighborhood um, organizations and also with um, some of the, the university personnel and uh, just appreciate the time to be able to do that and don't see any need to add any amendments at this point. 
Um, so just wanted to explain that I've had those discussions and I appreciate the opportunity to um, to make sure that I'm comfortable with not not trying to change anything at this point and not, and not um, adding any amendments. So I just want to say thanks. Thank you. Appreciate your diligence. Thank you, council members. Uh, I don't see anybody else who's got their hand up. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're actually we're going to roll call this vote simply so that for transparency reasons, some members of the public will know who is here. Um, and so with that um, in mind, I'm going to run down the uh, we have a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded on the table. I'm going to um, ask each member their vote, um, whether it's I or nay. I think we kind of know where people are. So when I say your name, just make sure you uh, you give me your vote. So I'm going to go first to Vice Chair Withers. Uh, aye. Okay, great. I'm going to go run down uh, on my list. I have Councilmember Cash. Aye. Councilmember Gamble. Aye. Councilmember Hall. Don't believe he's here. Councilmember Hancock. Aye. Okay. Councilmember Johnston. Aye. Councilmember Poley. Um, I don't think I'm, oh, I am on the committee. Yes, uh, I. Okay, great. Uh, Council Member Roberts, not sure if she was here. Okay, Council Member Swope. Council Member Young. Aye. All right, and then I will also cast a vote in favor. So that puts us at eight. I, uh, any member who I did not call on or who I missed or wanted to vote nay. All right, I think we're good. So motion is approved. Eight in favor, zero against. Oh, Thank you very much. Absolutely. And then we have one other item on the agenda that is bill number 2022-34 by Councilmember Syracuse Suar and others to provide for the waiver of certain building permit fees for the repair or rebuilding of property damaged as a result of the March 3rd, 2020 tornado. And I believe Councilmember Syracuse has an amendment. I'll move the bill. Oh, so yeah, we can. Yeah, let's let's move. Okay, bills moved and seconded. Councilmember Syracuse, um, why don't we, as a committee, we've got the amendment in front of us. We all know what it is. Can I get somebody to move the amendment? Uh, so moved. So moved. Second. Second. Got that. And now, Councilmember Syracuse, would you like to explain your amendment? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, basically, uh, the, the difference between the flood disaster and this disaster is that nearly nobody had insurance during the flood. Hopefully, most everybody uh, has insurance from the tornado. And so what this does is that there's no double dipping. And so the, the amendment basically says that there's a, an affidavit that needs to be signed so that the applicant attests that the permit fees that they're either getting waived or being reimbursed for um, have not been um, reimbursed from property insurance or uh, other sources. Thank you, Councilmember Syracuse. Is there anybody else who has any questions? I'm going up and down. Don't see any hands raised. Oh, uh, up we've got Council Vice Chair Withers. Um, can you hear me? I think I'll unmute. Um, oh, gotcha. I, I appreciate uh, the sponsor bringing this. One of the ones I wanted to check on, or I, I've maybe just to make the committee aware, but one of the items that I've had a contact from affected property owners in District 6 pertains to the um, sidewalk variance waivers. Um, and uh, as I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Council Member Syracuse, but this would this would apply if for some reason there was a homeowner or a property owner who wasn't insured that they would be able to waive the fee that we just instituted for um, sidewalk waivers or variances. Um, but if they do have insurance, then they would still have to remit that fee. Is that accurate? This is okay. just for uh, building permit fees. So sidewalks um, are, are not part of that. If Mr. Cooper is here, he could completely confirm that. See Mr. Cooper on here. I'm gonna unmute what says here. You there, John? And, and if, if I may, this is Councilmember Withers, yeah. Uh, one of the part of why this comes up is because when when folks are bringing forth a permit to rebuild or repair their structure, usually to rebuild, but and for some even repairs, that triggers the sidewalk requirements, and so then they're having to do the um, the sidewalk 
waiver process as well. That's, that's why I referenced that. And so I'm actually working with Director Herbert and folks to see if there might be a way to streamline that process a little bit, at least for, uh, for homeowners. Um, but but that, that is why that comes up, is because folks are obtaining their permit, their building permits for rebuilding the house or some repairs um, that are large. And then that is triggering a sidewalk waiver variance, which is, you know, we just instituted the fee uh, for that. So I just wanted to check and see if this applies to that component of their overall building. Got it. Um, I'm going to try once again. John, are you? You there, somebody from Metro Legal there who could address that? I see him unmuting, but I don't see the local. All right, let's let's keep that on the table. I've got Council Member Pulley who's also got his hand up, and we'll see if he's got questions as well. So when we get John, he can. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Very briefly, uh, I just wanted to uh, peruse this uh, fiscal note for a moment. Uh, uh, based on the way I read the uh, analysis, this is uh, a bill offered by the sponsor to basically help ease the pain of some of this uh, repair work being done in conjunction with tornado relief. Now, uh, uh, that being the case, it looks like uh, the codes department has estimated that this will be a $60,000 cost. Um, now, I'm assuming this is based on uh, the number of permits that we will receive for which we will not receive a permit fee. Um, but I, I also am thinking that this is also money. These building permits are permits that we would not be uh, receiving applications for if it wasn't for the tornado damage. Uh, uh, is that an accurate summation of what we're talking about here? Uh, and I would direct that at the sponsor. That's what I said, sure. Thank you, Chief Chair. Uh, that is correct. And in fact, we just left the Budget and Finance Committee meeting and it was this discussed about that $60,000 uh, fiscal note. With this amendment, that will actually uh, quite possibly reduce it e even further. Um, but you're correct that the 60,000 was based on what codes was already seeing as far as permits being uh, uh, applied for. But again, we're talking about permits that are applied for that had they not had tornado damage, they wouldn't be applying for the permits anyway, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So it's kind of a skewed number uh, based on that is the way I see it. So anyway, that gets to the answer to my question. Thank you very much. You bet, uh, Council Member. And I think um, also in during that discussion, we had another member of the Budget Committee who um, requested that we get a report on these once the period closed, the application period closed, and kind of okay. what the right. what the number really was. Basically, an updated real world fiscal impact. So, sure. Um, right. I'm going to try one thing for John. There, we have a we have a chamber mic that was muted. John, are you there? No. All right. Um, I really do want to get Councilmember Withers' question answered, if possible. Um, so let's hang here. I do see Councilmember Gamble has her hand up. And I do see, oh, Mr. Kathy from the Codes Department. I'm going to go to him first, and I'm going to come to you, Councilmember Gamble. Evan, you just unmute yourself. <laughs> Um, there, there you go. Go ahead. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm checking on it right now and might be able to get an answer in the next minute or so. I just want to be clear about the question from Council Member Withers. Um, is the sidewalk variance fee waived along with the building permit fee for those affected by the tornado? Is that correct? Yes, that is the question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Give me, give me just a couple of minutes. Let me see if I can figure it out. Okay, great. And I do see John trying to raise his hand. I'm going to try to see if we got him. John, you there? Let me go to Hannah and see if she's on. Hannah, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. And um, my understanding is that the sidewalk waiver would not be would not be a fee waiver. Okay, say it one more time, Hannah, because you broke my uh -huh. lips. Uh, so it's my understanding that this is just building permits and that would not include a sidewalk waiver. 
application right. fees. Great, okay, that is helpful. I am going to go very quickly to Council Member Gamble as Mr. Kathy works on that as well to confirm and see what questions you had. Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Chair. I have a question about the timing, time limit on this. Is there a sunset on this particular um, bill as far as when people can get this waiver? Yes, thank you. Uh, June 3rd is when people need to pull the permits by. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And all right. And I'm going to go back and make sure I'm looking at everybody's hands. If you've already spoken and you're not going to want to speak again, go ahead and put your hands down the little button. I'll make sure we've got a good representation here. All right. And then I know that Mr. Kathy is working here, so hopefully he'll pick back up on that. In fact, I'll unmute him. Evan, were you able to find anything additional? We did get a legal opinion that said that would not be triggered. Um, I haven't gotten anything yet. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, with Hannah weighing in, I'm going to go back to Vice Chair Withers and see if that satisfies this question or if you have further questions. Councilman Withers? Well, I, I mean, it does. It's just, uh, like I say, uh, for folks in order to actually get their building permit, they have to go through the sidewalk waiver process in many cases, at least at District 6. So that's why that's kind of coming up with, with some of my property owners. It, that, that's how the, the question arises. And so I'm actually working with John Michael and Director Herbert folks to at least uh, sort of look at a way of streamlining that process because, as you know, if, you, if for some reason <clears throat> a property owner did need a sidewalk waiver, in order to obtain their building permit that would hold up their permit by uh, possibly five or six weeks. And so we are also looking at ways of possibly streamlining that decision um, in order to get people their permits faster than five to six weeks. So we're, we're sort of looking, looking at that as we're going through the rebuilding process. But, you know, it, in all honesty, you know, I don't, I don't know, at least for District 6, I don't know. I don't know how many of were uninsured who would benefit from this necessarily. Anyway, I think it's really good legislation to benefit those who would be uninsured. But um, but I, I, most of my property owners appear to have homeowners insurance, whether or not it was you know satisfactory for them or not. They did they do actually have it. But but I know there there may be other uh, districts and other areas where um, tragically folks were uninsured, and this would definitely be a benefit for them. And so I definitely still support the bill either way. It's just I wanted to ask that as a clarifying question. So I appreciate that. Great. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'm going to run through the hands one more time that I see are still up and make sure the males had uh, additional questions. Council Member Gamble, oh, you just put your hand down. Council Member Pulley, did you have additional questions? No, sir. Okay, great. All right. I think we are all set, and then we'll work on those additional questions if we have them. Council Member Withers, I see your hands up as well. Do you have anything else to add? <laughs> I think we're good there. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Hands are down. Perfect. All right. I think we're ready to take a vote. We're going to take a vote on the amendment first. So all in favor of the amendment, please unmute and say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We recommend the amendment. And then on the bill as amended, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? All right, great. All right, we recommend for approval, and that, I believe I'm going to speak very slowly in case Hannah or Slade jumps in and says I need to do anything additional, but I believe that concludes our business for the day. So we will uh, adjourn the Codes Fair and Farmers Market Committee. Thank you all for attending. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.